Hi everybody, welcome, welcome to Lazy Desk Academy. Mm. The invisible drink. Um, welcome to our Pico 8 tutorial. Welcome to our tutorial where we're gonna make a roguelike. Um, and so the last time you might be watching us, the, the, we, this was really getting really exciting because we have like a really cool um, line of sight function and we can actually uncover uh, the map a little bit. That's fine. That's really sure. Really, really sure. I'm, I'm mixing up German and English. I'm sorry. That's really nice. But um, we figured out there's some some problems with it, and we're gonna want to be fixing them one after another. One of the problems is that the chests are blocking light of sight, and you know, that's kind of like gameplay now. We kind of have to decide what actually is blocking line of sight or not. Um, but for me, I decided okay, um, I want. Um, I want line of sight being really about the level geometry, and I mean actual walls, and not so much about you know the objects within the within the world. So I don't think the chest um, and the pots should be blocking line of sight. That's that doesn't seem right to me. Maybe this huge block because it's like filling the entire tile, but not like these objects. It seems to me silly that you would like have like a small chest or like a pot, and there's like a dragon behind it, and you cannot see it. <laughs> That's, I don't know. That doesn't make sense to me. So we are going to use um, we're going to use another flag for this. It's going to be this this yellow flag. This yellow flag will let me know what actually blocks line of sight. And in our case, it's just going to be this. Done. So this blocks line of sight, and um, everything else. This flag is going to be on. So later on, when we add kind of like more wall tiles, we have to make sure that the red and the yellow thing are on for those. Um, so let us go to the to the gameplay function. So here is you might remember uh, we had like this is walkable thing. Um, yeah. So here we're gonna go if mode equals site, then else this and you know this is actually a situation where we're gonna have a huge if statement thing but that's fine and so if the mode is site we're gonna return f get uh, TLE and this is gonna be flag number two that's it Yeah, if it's true. No, actually, we have to return not the flag. So not flag if, if get two, because if it's if the light is on, that means it's block side. So that means it's kind of like not walk. <laughs> okay, so let's see if that works now. Ah, I notice the door is blocking the this uh, is not blocking the side. So we have to turn it on for the door as well. Okay, that makes sense. Now we can look through the chest and look through the vases and see on the other side. That's excellent. But now there is, alas, alas, there is another issue here that we, we also encountered where I can look down this hallway here and you can see you, you can see every tile in the hallway, but you don't see the walls of the hallway. And that kind of makes sense. It has is related to the fact to how we are doing line of sight. You saw that we had like the st um, stair step function where, you know, it's kind of like going, trying to draw a line, but it kind of sticks to to the individual uh, tiles. So it kind of creates like these stairs kind of things. So when you, your angle is very um, shallow, when you kind of like, when you have like a, something that's at a very low angle, it will actually, you know, do eventually it will do a step into the wall and it will encounter some tiles in between. And so the wall would kind of like hide behind itself, so to speak. The wall tiles will hide behind themselves. Um, the solution for this is, um, what you do is you do a line of sight and instead of just uncovering that one tile that you found line of sight, if there's like a line of sight to a tile, you, you don't just uncover this one tile, but you also uncover all neighboring tiles. And that's what we're gonna do. So in gameplay, uh, we have unfog, and there's going to be a second function called unfog tile. Uh, 
and we're gonna have like a TX TY for the location. And instead of like just setting this fog to zero, I mean, we're gonna set that maybe. No, we're not gonna set that. Uh, we're gonna launch this in unfog tile function. Bam. Uh, on a very fundamental level, it will just uncover this one thing, but also it will check the neighboring tiles. And um, the way I wanted to do this, it will only uncover neighboring tiles if they would block line of sight. So if there's a tile, it won't actually uncover the the floors around it. If there, if it found a floor, it will just uncover all the tiles around it that would otherwise block line of sight. Uh, and that's only the case for floor tiles. Not to, so if you're going to see a wall, we're not going to be able to look behind the wall. The wall actually, you know, the buck steps, stops at the wall. But if you see a tile, there might be some unwalkable tiles, or like line of sign blocking tiles around it that we want to actually show in this case. So we're going to go like if unfog tile, uh, if um, uh, is, uh, no, where is it? Oh, we don't have it here. Okay, so if is walkable um, x y site, then and now we're gonna loop uh, all around the neighboring tiles. We already did it once. You might remember in the in the in, in here, right? Here, this whole thing. We're gonna copy it and rewrite this for our purposes. So if it's walkable, we're gonna look for all of the neighboring tiles and we're gonna see which of the neighboring tiles is um, um, can be uncovered. So um, we're looping from one to four and we again, we're using this little, these little very useful arrays that allow us to kind of like look in our directions that kind of encode, associate um, X and Y differences with a single uh, number that kind of like encodes direction. So one to four is only the four different directions. And we're looping through all of the directions. So we're saving the dx and dy. We actually might, uh, we don't need the dx, dy. We can go directly with to tx, ty. So in this case, we're gonna go um, tx, ty. So the target x, target y. We're gonna add um, x, which is, wait, we somehow broke this function. Unfog tile. Um, x, y. So x plus dear x and y plus dear y. Like this. So if this is walkable site, if this is not walkable site, if this is like a wall next to this floor that we found, then we want to uncover this this floor and this is kind of like a tweak this is not something that you can like this is something that i figured out as i was like developing these kinds of games where it's like that's kind of like doesn't look very organic so i want to be able to to do these things kind of things so then we're gonna unfog this tile no not we're not gonna unfog this tile. we're gonna actually set the fog of that tile to zero mm -hmm. like this let's try this something is wrong um hmm, interesting. Okay. Oh, maybe the TX and TY. Oh yeah, TX and TY are wrong. It should be at, at X and Y. So you can see now I'm looking down the hallway and it actually shows me the entire hallway. It doesn't actually show me just, just the floor of the toilet. Uh, of the toilet. <laughs> it doesn't just so, show me the floor of the hallway. It shows me uh, also the walls of the hallway. And that's something I wanted to, do, to have. Um, there's a bit of an issue where the diagonal stuff is not okay. Here's still something wrong. Runtime error. Fog txt is equal to zero. Attempt to... Okay, there's a nil value here happening. Oh, I think I know what the problem is. <clears throat> 
So this problem occurs because um, we are trying to unfog a tile that is um, outside of the of the map. The map is very lenient about trying to access access values that are negative. Like it's very lenient of me, us trying to access trying to paint in here. It's fine. The map system is very very forgiving. But now we introduce this fog array, and that fog array is super un unforgiving. And so now we actually start. If we are interacting with this, we actually want to be, you know, um, making sure that things are in bounds. So we're gonna go in bounds. We already have this function for this. Tx, uh, ty, and not is. There. So you can see now it's it uh, doesn't crash anymore. Great, excellent. Perfect, works works like a charm. I love it. Now let's put some monsters in here. Let's see how that works. Let's maybe put a monster here, just somewhere hidden. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Hmm, the monster jumps. Do you see that? That's not good. That's not how it's supposed to work. That's not good. We have to fix this. Why the monsters are jumping like this? Something, something broke. Is it related to our AI, I think? It looks to me as if... It looks to me like as if moving is false. Because if you set it to true... Yeah, now they're moving. So it's, it looks to me like moving the M task is not not properly re, um, returning true. Ah, I see. Mm -hmm. So if there's two monsters, one monster might be moving, but the other won't be moving. So we have to do something like um, if M task M and um, not moving then moving or actually we can do something like moving equals m task m uh, or moving Something like this. So, like, if once moving has been set to true, it won't be turned back to false again. So this will, this should give us a smooth, smooth animation. Yeah, now it works. Oh, that's great. Now the monster are following us. It's super nice. Come on, monster. What else? Um, so let us start removing some of the debug. We don't need that debug anymore. Um, where's more debug? Do we have some debug in here? Yeah. And I think we had some in a draw function, update function with some debug. That's good stuff. Not any any other debug. It's good. Looks nice and and juicy. It's kind of fun. So interesting to see here that um, um, you see that you know this this line of sight stuff not always perfect. So you see that um, we we are in a position where we can see the monster, but the monster cannot see us. 
And that's because of how we calculate line of sight, depending on when you, this function that we that we introduced there, this kind of line, line of sight function, is not re reversible. Or it, I mean, if you draw the line from one direction to another, it's not the same. It won't go the same path as if you're drawing from one, uh, if you're drawing it in the opposite direction. And so that's why you might, might be in a situation where you might see a monster, but the monster won't be seeing you. And vice versa, sometimes you will, the monster will see you that you haven't seen before. So uh, this is a bit of an issue and um, yeah, no, we might actually f try to find maybe a, a, a version of that, that kind of function that is, that is more consistent, that is kind of moving, uh, that is checking these tiles a bit more thoroughly and, and it, it has more predictable behavior. But on the other hand, like it's, it's it's not that big of a deal. It's not like completely game breaking. I think it's fine that some you know that line of sight is a bit unpredictable in this case. So you are um, you can completely rely on it. And it's kind of fun sometimes to, to be like, oh, I saw a monster there, but it didn't see me yet. You know. Speaking of which, I think in this case, uh, since we still have some some time left, I think it's also worthwhile now to think about um, about when when we have line of sight to actually limit line of sight to a, a range because right now you know i can look like all the way across the entire map and that's that means that we uncover our map very quickly but also like we have to also think about maybe situations where um we might be able to sneak past the monster because they have a limited sight range and so that's something i want to be adding like every mob should have like a sight range and um, the um, that will kind of like um, define you know the how far it can see. So let's try to adapt um, implement that. Okay, so let's think about this a little bit. Some something I might be, might be doing here is I'm going to give every mob an ability like a like a stat. Um, we might actually put the stat in this in this table. That's fine. And we're going to call this stat. Um, Range, sight, perception, perception perk, I look, distance, range, sphere of influence. <laughs> it's difficult to abbreviate it in a, in a. You know what? Let's call it line of sight, LOS. That makes sense. Not not gonna not gonna mess around with it. And for both monsters, we're gonna for both mobs for my player character and for the for the mob for the slime, we're gonna set it to to three, uh, four. And the idea is that you know later on we might have monsters who are more perceptible, who can see you further out, and maybe some monsters who are blind, that you can like easily sneak around. That's something that we could be doing here. And okay, so um, so here we're gonna go comma. Let's put it where we assign the ATK because loss equals mob loss type. And then, so here, when we actually, when we do the, the weight here, we're gonna go something like if um, there's line of sight and dist uh, and all of that stuff um, if that is smaller than m dot los smaller equals let's go smaller equals so now the monsters there's a problem there oh yeah we could provoke forgot a comma here uh, I'm gonna test it in this hallway here. And in this hallway. And I'm gonna remove all of it to this monster as well. And I'm gonna drop the monster in here. So now the monster doesn't see me, and now when I enter its, its range, it will actually start following me. Now there is a bit of an issue here where, um, if you look at this exactly, we um, 
this uh, line of sight thing only applies when we are <clears throat> when we're waiting it doesn't really apply here so we might uh, apply it here as well let's let's do that and so now this is kind of like oops no i press some button i hate it when i press some button and uh, like this screen changes completely um so we might copy this one but this is like a huge statement now so i'm actually thinking about maybe um getting this out into its own into its own um into its own function yeah let's 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 have a function here that's this like can see mob one mob one mob two and if bam or actually return this huge statement the line uh, the distance which we're gonna check for first because it costs less and the uh, um, the line of sight and now it's like m1 m1 m2 m2 m1 and line of sight m1 m1 m2 m2 okay so if can see and that this allows us to replace this whole line with just like can see m uh, p mob then we're going to aggro stuff and here as well th this distance is okay but here we can also be like okay if we can see them then we're going to reset the, the target so this is going to be a bit more more um, okay and so all on um, all that is left to do for for us is to be um to change the unfog tile thing here so we're going to go if um if there's a line of sight um, first of all if dist um p mo um yeah see now we actually need twice the pmoc function so we're going to go local px py that's going to be player x and player y that's going to be p mob um mob x comma p mob y and then we're gonna drop them in here. Uh, so if the distance between the player position and the position that we are checking, if that smaller equals <clears throat> um, p p p mob dot ls, and uh, the line of sight is px py uh -huh. and then unfog tile we could actually also plug it in here so we never unfog a tile that is outside of our um, our range but uh, but yeah i don't think that's that important i don't know that doesn't seem to me like such a big deal like there is a bit of a situation here where it's like look at at So you see how we're kind of like, if you look at the t um, wall tile, that single wall tile at the very bottom of the screen, you see that we uncovered it now, even though it's technically outside of our, our, our range of sight. So you could say that this is a bit of a bad situation and then we might want to restrict this. I don't know if that's such a big deal. I don't really care about that too much okay yeah i don't i don't think that we need that good 
So, um, what else? What uh, what do we want to be doing still? Um, I don't think there is too much happening right now. So I think we got this this covered. If there's anything you guys are noticing, um, because I don't. So I think next thing um, is going to be let's create a. Uh, first of all, I want to turn off this line of sight thing for a second, so we can kind of observe what the monster is doing. Um, so let us be like um, blank map zero here. So the map is uncovered. Um, and now I want to kind of, kind of create like a gauntlet for our, our little monsters to kind of like go through. And then we're going to prepare everything for, for the kind of like the next episode. Um, so yeah, so this is going to be our gauntlet. And then we're going to set the monster. Let's try to create a situation where we can easily outmaneuver the monster. Um, well, actually, the monster won't get actually outmaneuvered now, <laughs> funny enough, because because we have like this um, the system that makes him go to the last pos position that they saw us, and so I think he might actually be not be completely fooled by us now. Oh god, I'm, I'm like, my brain is turning off. I've been recording a lot of episodes today. Okay, let's try this. So now the monster sees us. And if we return, he doesn't see us anymore. Now if he sees us now, like if we go here, then he actually follows us correctly. So that's kind of like, ah, we might actually, technically we could be like, okay, we don't actually need this better um, pathfinding function. And you know what? That would be fine. That's fine. If you, if um, I think a lot of like uh, games that are kind of like even very advanced, don't, don't need like these very special, these good uh, um, pathfinding functions. It's fine to, mon to monsters sometimes get confused by the dungeon that they're in. However, uh, for our purposes, uh, <clears throat> we want to, be, we will need that pathfinding function for other stuff later on. So I want to have that pathfinding function anyway, uh, that good pathfinding function. Also, I think it's a good exercise to do like a real pathfinding function, the one that always finds its goal. So uh, that's something we're going to do in the next episode. We, um, we are going to uh, change the AI of the monsters so they always aggro, automatically aggro, and we make, make it so that they try to follow us, and then we want to make sure that this monster uh, in here, that he always finds us and, um, and actually gets out of this little corner and finds his way. Uh, but you know, that's coming on up, up in the next episode. Um, for now, the code for today's episode is going to be, as always, in the doobly-doo. And a reminder that you should probably visit the Discord where we hang out testing the, the, the prototype. And you can also be giving some feedback there, maybe like try to modify, kind of try to influence the way we're writing this, this rogue. Like maybe, you know, you think that we need to, that we need to restrict uh, our line of sight, that we cannot, we should be, shouldn't be able to uncover this single tile wall there because it's outside of uh, outside of our line of sight. If that's the case, let me know. Uh, see you on the next episode, guys. Bye bye.